Welcome to Veegasm. You, you clicked on my video, thank you so much. Um, I've been doing this for quite a while now and the uh, growth has been slow uh, to say the least. So I am very, very grateful for you joining me for this recipe. I'll say recipe, but this isn't really a recipe. We're just putting together a few things that you can buy at the shop to create this really beautiful cheese puff pastry lattice. So these are the main ingredients that we're gonna need. You'll need some ready roll puff pastry. This is uh, one of the, the sort of store-bought cheap versions, perfectly adequate for this recipe. Um, this is the vegan version of a mature cheddar which is perfect for this and just because we're going to do a little glaze on the sausage roll we're going to use some uh, coconut milk so we will be using some other herbs and spices as well we're going to be using some chopped basil um, some ground pepper this is uh, garlic I used to, I, I like to use a little bit of uh, uh, ground garlic with mine as well but um, a full description will be below the video uh, with everything used in it so I'll make sure that I try to uh, update you if I add anything else to the recipe so first job you'll want your puff pastry out at the beginning um, maybe sort of 10 or 15 minutes before they do prefer you to take your puff pastry out of its packet <laughs> Give me a sec. Uh, I haven't used the Asda Brown one before. The other one's got like a serrated edge on it um, so that you can uh, not look silly on the internet. So literally just get your puff pastry out and leave it like that for, for sort of 10 or 15 minutes and that will allow uh, the pastry to come up to room temperature and that just makes it a lot easier to handle. So here we are back with the uh, puff pastry. I'm probably not waiting long enough and uh, it may serve as well because then you'll see what happens when you don't wait long enough. So what usually happens is, there we go, it started there. Um, you'll see that the puff pastry just starts to split where it's not malleable enough this end of it where it has another chance to warm up because it was you know at the center of the roll it will split but um, all you do is you just pinch pinch it back together run your finger over and yeah as you can see, that's, uh, that's fixed it. i lay down that edge a little bit more. So right, this is stage uh, one, unless stage one was getting the, uh, getting the pastry out of the fridge to rest in uh, room temperature for 10 or 15 minutes. We actually only waited about five or 10 minutes there, um, which was why we got what we got. So, right, first up, uh, we are going to take a knife and we're going to cut this into two equal parts or equal-ish parts. Uh, and the reason we're doing that in this video is because my oven isn't very big. So if you're not, u if you're not using uh, a small oven like I am, um, you don't cut this line down the middle and then you would make your slices for the lattice this way. But because I'm forced to use uh, a, a small oven, um, I'm going to be doing it this way. So just grab something that you've got handy. You could use a ruler. Um, these don't need to be uh, perfect in any way, shape or form. Um, and yeah, you can make the, the lattice 
chunky part as as thick or as thin as you like you don't want to go too thick because then you'll lose the effect um, but as you can see we're scoring through about a third of the way each side uh, and using a, a, a ruler or you know like I am a, a kebab skewer um, just allows you to get those slots exactly opposite each other so I'm going to skip the rest of this step and I'll see you at stage stage three because this is stage two right okay here we are this is stage four I don't know why I started the uh, the stage idea <laughs> because it's just making it bloody awkward for me to remember so the next step let's just call this the uh, the next step shall we make my life a little bit easier so get your ingredients uh, in this case we're using the the as the free from cheese don't be shy get a decent amount of it in the center there now at this stage we're going to be adding a little bit of uh, extra flavor so i'm just sprinkling in i should have done this by finger really um, that was a little bit of garlic crushed powdered garlic uh, that is quite a lot of pepper um, i do like a little bit of kick in my food um, this spicing stage is all about you really you go with uh, whatever you decide and this here is just some dried oregano um, the flavor with the medium cheddar on its own is great but I really do like to make things exceptionally tasty and that's what we're doing here so the next step not stage five or whatever it would have been is just to take your lattice flaps um, <laughs> I love the word flaps I'm such a child um, that yes to take your lattice flaps and just to crisscross um, don't be frightened to stretch them a little bit if you feel that the, they need it this is why the first stage uh, or second oh my god stages uh, that's why it doesn't really matter how perfectly you do the little slices because at this point the pastry is quite malleable and you can um, stretch things up if need be uh, and this is all going to puff up in the oven it doesn't have to be perfect in any way shape or form now you'll see as we get to the end here we do have some extra so I cut those little pieces off there I'll take uh, the outside one and flip it back over and then tuck that in down there and then same again with this side all this means is that somebody gets a little bit of extra pastry on their end and then we just take those two out there and that gives us there you go look at that professional looking cheese lattice pastry but we're not finished yet before we get it in the oven we're going to take some of that i'm using coconut milk uh, I use coconut milk for most things but you can use soy you can use oat milk it doesn't really have any uh, effect I don't think on the end product um, I just like to use coconut milk I do feel like coconut milk has a little bit more fat in it which um, will uh, what will it do it will just accentuate uh, the the crispiness if if that if that's the words I was looking for so I'm just grabbing a little bit more oregano the toasted or roasted oregano on it will just make it look next level like you know you, 
I, what I'm trying to show you is that things can be exceptional just because they're vegan doesn't mean that it's going to be bland or flavorless or it's not going to look next level so there we go our next job uh, and this is a little bit tricky let's bring that into shot the next job is to just lift this and plonk it on there um, i'm having to do it slightly um cockeyed because of uh, I'm using, I'm actually using a, a little, um, a little air fryer for this job. So, right, um, lift it. I find it easier if you lift with the paper first, and then just plonk it on there, and there you go. It really is that simple. Oh, if you can hear the barking, that'll be Lucy. Say hello, Lucy. Right, so there you go. That's it, pre-oven. I'll be back in about 15 or 20 minutes and I'll show you the end result. And trust me when I say that this is going to be one of the tastiest things you've ever tried. Let's get it. So while the other one's cooking, I've just got this one ready. I just wanted to show you that um, I'm using some of my uh, homegrown fresh uh, basil leaves um, the rest of the flavoring in here is exactly the same I haven't done anything different on the center of it uh, but as you can see I've got some homegrown basil going in and uh, you could chop it but I'm just tearing it this is one of those rustic sort of dishes um so yeah there's there's no harm in just being you know a little bit sort of uh, casual shall we say i'm back again um before i pop this one in the oven uh, i just wanted to let you know that i had forgot one of the stages with the other one now this is optional but the cheese really does make a difference if you pop it on the outside as well so you get those lovely sort of caramelized cheese flavors on top of the pastry so if you just imagine for my sanity that i did this before i put it in there on the other one and you'll see the difference when this one comes out and unfortunately because we don't have tasty vision you won't be able to taste the difference unless you do this recipe and if you do do this recipe please leave a link to some photographs or something down in the description you can also find me the white rabbit you can find me on facebook and you'll be able to uh, find the recipes and stuff that i do there also all the links will be in the description below so here we go guys the first one has just come out and uh, I wouldn't actually recommend the Asda Pust Pastry. I'm just going to pop the other one in quickly. Yeah, at this point, I'm a little bit underwhelmed uh, with how this looks. If you haven't seen my sausage roll video, I'll pop a link up there and you'll see that they usually come out a lot more brown and love just better looking. Um, I don't know how to explain it really so uh, yeah um, and I don't usually use uh, tin foil I usually use like an air uh, yeah the pastry hasn't cooked on the bottom oh my goodness I've done this recipe a dozen times and I always use the the air tray let me what I mean. So I always cook on one of these and it cooks evenly from above and below. I'm trying to cook clean today and I use the tin foil and as a result it's not cooked as well as it could have been on the bottom. Um, but you know uh, I've just learned another way that it doesn't work. So here we go guys there's the uh, the other one. Um, I'm definitely not going to be recommending this pastry 
it just doesn't do the job as well as the one that I normally get from the Sainsbury's. Um, I'm not sponsored by Sainsbury's in any way, shape or form. Uh, I've just had better results with their really well puff pastry. Um, I don't know what else to say really. Let's uh, bring it up for a nice close up. Hopefully my camera will focus. Which it doesn't seem to be. So there we go. Let's have a nice close up. They do look really good still. Um, but I am a little bit disappointed. I'm a little bit disappointed with the Ready Roll Puff Pastry from Asda. I don't know what it is about their puff pastry, but it just doesn't seem to do the job as well as the one from Sainsbury's. So let's cut back to the studio shot. I'm going to give these about 10 minutes to cool down. This one's ready to go. Uh, and then they'll be ready to cut. You do have to let these rest for about 10 minutes though. So there we go. They're not as good as they normally are. <laughs> Typical, the, the moment that I put a camera up and uh, try to create something for you guys, it doesn't go out uh, as well as I'd hoped. But you know what? Uh, these things happen, I won't be using tin foil to keep things tidy in future because that caused us some problems and uh, I won't be using the, the puff pastry from Asda again because that's just not very good. Um, it, this hasn't come out anywhere as near as well terrible English this it hasn't come out anywhere near as well as it normally does when I use the other one so let me just grab a knife out I did say that I'd give these a, a, a taste test not actually the right knife I'm looking for but let's get it done so I'm gonna try the one that I forgot to put the cheese on uh, because this one's been sat the longest um, Seems like I've been going for ages on this video. The bottom hasn't cooked as well as it has on the other one because of the tin foil, so don't use the tin foil like I said. The flavour though. The flavour's really good. Um, some of the vegan cheese tastes like arse. But you know, people are new and they're trying to do their best. Um, they haven't quite got it, a lot of them yet, but some of the vegan cheeses are very good. This one's not too bad, actually. Uh, I would have used the Herbie Mexicana with jalapeno ones. That's probably my favorite. But this one's all right. Mm. Mm. Nice and fluffy. I bet this other one's better. This one isn't quite ready yet, but just uh, so you can see the difference between the two. See, this one's a lot fluffed up a lot more, and that's because we use the air tray, the proper baking air tray, um, for this one. Let's give this a test. This is cooked lovely all the way through because I didn't use tin foil. Uh, and I don't know why, but this tastes so much better. Mm. Maybe because we remembered to put the cheese on the top of it. So I'm going to cut these up now and give my neighbours a knock. Whenever I cook anything like this, I'm mindful not to eat it all. And uh, sharing is caring. So if you'd like to share, for the, share the video for me, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching this all the way through. I'm working really, really hard there. I don't want to go into too much details, but I am struggling in life a little bit. And uh, this is something that I think I can do 
if I can make it pay. So if you could share the video for me, uh, go watch some of my other videos or something, that would really help and it would mean a lot to me and my new family. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.